So just when I think that Zapier is gonna slow down in its innovations for a little while, they roll out with something new and Zapier is really pushing the envelope on what is possible with AI and integrations. So they came out with something new called Zapier Central where you can work hand in hand with AI bots an experimental AI workspace where you can teach bots to work across their 6,000 apps. And if you scroll down, they've got some examples of connecting to live data, giving some simple instructions and automating your work as you'd expect. So we can scroll up to the top and click on Try Central Today. And here's where we're gonna give our bot a name. We're gonna do this one for an e-commerce example. So I'll call this Orders Bot. And here in our Orders Bot, we've got two different things that we can do. We've got behaviors and data sources. So a data source we can connect and at the beginning, remember this is in beta, it's just rolling out here. We've got Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Notion. I'd love to see Airtable, SmartSuite, some other database options here, but this is a good start for a lot of people. So we will go ahead with Google Sheets. I've already authenticated here. I'm gonna choose a data source with my order data. And at this point, it's going to sync your data. You can see that it lists that data source that we have here. You can expand this. It'll have this syncing icon. So the first times I was experimenting with this, it didn't sync right away. If you're experiencing any issues, you might wanna open this up and you can manually sync that. So if we take a look at my order data, I've just got some really simple examples, assuming this is coming over from some e-com system that we have. So we've got information about our customers, what they've purchased, the unit price, and when they have ordered this. So let's go back in here and see if we can ask it some questions about our orders. So maybe we wanna ask it how many orders did we receive today? And we're gonna do this in real time. We're not gonna skim through this. So you can see it does take a little while here from the processing time. So it did take a little bit of time to execute here. You can see that it ran a code block. So it took my natural language of saying, how many orders did we get today? And then it's doing basically a SQL query here. We're using some code to determine if this was today based on that order date. But what's cool is we didn't have to go in and define the columns. I didn't map this and say, okay, well, here's my data and here's the field to look at and then go based on a certain kind of query. That's the really cool part about what it's doing in the background with the natural language processing. And then it used this tool complete here to summarize essentially what we're doing. Take the response from the code and then be able to return that back to the user. We received 10 orders. So let's ask it another question. What's the total dollar value of the orders placed today? We'll run our query. You can see it takes a little bit of time to think about this. So I hope the performance improves over time. It'll be useful for use cases that are a little bit more complicated here. But in this case, I could probably summarize the data faster than I'm actually talking to the bot. Awesome, so it's summarizing this. Let's take a look at our code block and we're summing the total price here as total value. So it's really cool what it's doing in the background. It's just that the performance isn't super great if I'm just interacting with that data. Okay, let's try something else and let's add a new behavior. So if we click on create behavior, these are some instructions to our bot about what we want to do. So we'll keep going with this e-commerce example. We'll use the same data that we have. So when we've got an order in a Google Sheet, create a summary of that order and send it to Slack. As soon as we type that, it's coming up and suggesting the triggers and actions that we need. And so in this case, we're gonna click on Google Sheets, new spreadsheet row. Let's click that. I'd like for it to be a little bit more intelligent here that if we already picked a data source that we could pull from the same data source, but that's okay. We can choose the value here from our order data again. Let's add our trigger. And then we can go ahead and use Slack, send a channel message. And for the channel, I'm going to put in a specific value We'll choose, and we've got a demo one that we use for these videos. And let's just have AI generate this. So again, I'm not gonna map anything. I'm just gonna see what it comes up with. Go ahead and add the action. And let's go ahead and test our behavior out. So you can see it opens up this new area here where it's testing this automatically for us in the background. I like that I'm not individually testing the trigger and then testing the action. It's just doing this for me. So we can see in our test, it's now fired off this new order into the Slack channel that we have and summarizes the data for us automatically. And if we want to review or edit this at any time, we've got our order to Slack that we can expand down here. We could turn that on, as well as being able to see when did this execute. So I can click over on my activity and can see that it sent that order to Slack. Here's the information that it sent. Here's the Slack channel that it sent it to and exactly what happened. So we can review when this occurs, because in reality, this is happening in the background. This is an automated process that we've set up. So we have both kind of the human in the loop type actions that we're taking with Zapier, where we're talking to our bot and getting information back. 
but then we can also set up these automations that happen even when we're not monitoring it. Okay, so here's where it gets a little bit confusing for me because I think the functionality is awesome. However, it feels like a lot of the other pieces that are out there already. So for example, when you're creating a Zap, you can type in instructions and they have AI that then looks up the appropriate triggers and actions to help automatically create that Zap for you. They've also been some of the first partners with OpenAI and let you create your own custom GPTs that then trigger Zapier's AI actions in the background. If you wanna check out more about that, we've got some instructions in this other video that we've made. And then within Zapier's own interfaces, you can also create your own chatbot and that's got its own separate licensing for it as well. So you can train your chatbot. It's kind of the inverse of the previous thing that we were looking at where we can have our bot and then we can even create special actions for it as well which again are going to trigger those as you're interacting with the chatbot. So I think what this is about is really the start of a paradigm shift. For so long, those of us who have been building automations are used to doing it in a canvas kind of layout. And it's pretty linear, a linear way of thinking about it. It's very analytical. So even though Zapier is one of the easiest automation platforms to use, still feels a little bit technical. And I think the goal here is really to make this easier and expand this to more and more people because you saw how easy that was. I just type natural language, information comes up, click on a couple buttons, I'm good to go. More and more people are getting used to the chat type interface to be able to interact with the information coming our way. And so I think this is something that we're going to see more and more and more. I honestly wouldn't be surprised at some point if this becomes the main way that people interact with setting up their own automations. And the nomenclature behind this, bots, Zapier has disclosed information that they say more and more people are just referring to automations as bots. So this is an e-commerce or an orders bot or for myself, we do a lot with YouTube. Maybe I wanna make a YouTube bot and so I can interact with it. Really nice interface, easy way to do it. So hopefully this gives you a glimpse into what is possible with Zapier Central. If you have any questions about your own automations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations.